morning my dear students today first class of our coaching so in today's class we are going to start first chapter of second pu chemistry that is solid state so in previous class you have already studied regarding solids you have studied regarding the matter what is matter guys matter is anything which has mass which which can occupy the space yes that matter can be classified into three categories what are those solid liquid and gases what are solid guys solids are characterized by definite shape mass and volume then what about liquid liquid do not have their own shape they will take the shape of the container means wherever you put the liquid they will take the shape of that container then what about the gas gases are do not have the shape and size but gases have mass gases whenever you put into the container they will settle in that container itself that means they will also take the shape of the container and in gases the particles constituent particles are very loosely bound yes so this is regarding introduction of solids so matter has three state solid liquid and gases among that we are going to study in this chapter regarding solids now firstly we will study regarding what are the general characteristics of solids that means what are the characters of the solids so first only i told solids are having definite shape size mass and volume so you can take any solid they have definite size and shape they will have a definite mass and also definite volume so that is the first characteristics of solid second one so in solid the particles inside the solid are orderly arranged regularly arranged that means you can say in any solid so many number of particles are there those particles are arranged in a regular fashion in a orderly arrangement yes that is a second characteristic first one solids have a definite shape mass and volume second characteristic solids are having orderly arranged particles so regularly or orderly arranged particles and those are very closely to each other the particles are very closely to each other so that they can bind the entire solid that means the particles or the atoms inside the solids are very nearer they are having very strong force of attraction so that this solid they will give a definite shape to the solids third point the solids have higher density compared to liquids and gases density means you know density means it is the ratio of mass divided by value yes so solids have the higher density compared to liquids and gases why because in solids i have sure, i have told you particles are strongly or closely arranged as a result they will have a larger amount of mass compared to liquids and gases so if they are having larger amount of mass mass divided by volume ratio will be more therefore density of the solid is more compared to liquids and gases this is the third point fourth point so in solids they are not having translatory motion particles are not having translatory motion they are not having rotational motion but they have vibratory motion then what is translatory motion guys so the inside the solid this atoms or the particles are move like this yes zigzag path anyway they will move so they do not have that motion that is called translatory okay then rotational motion the particle inside the solid they can rotate themselves but that is not possible in case of solid they do not have a rotational motion just they have a vibratory motion like this vibration so that means solid inside the solid atoms or the particles do not have a translatory motion do not have a zigzag path right and do not have a rotational motion like this they only have vibratory motion yes this is regarding solids and in solids fourth point is in solid they have a higher melting and boiling point compared to liquid and gases this is why because in solid the particles are closely arranged orderly arranged and as a result the two particles have the strong bond to break that bond we should supply some more energy yes so let us assume this is a solid and we are having two particles or two atoms between two atoms there is a bond 
that bond is very strong in case of solid to break that bond we should supply more energy nothing but more heat as a result so if you wanted to put a more energy so they will have a higher melting point and boiling point to break that bond then only they will melt to break that bond then only they can boil so therefore to break that bond we should supply more energy therefore compared to liquid and gases solid so says solid so higher melting point and boiling point so these are the general characteristics of solid first one solids have a definite shape definite mass definite value second point solid in solids constituent particles are closely and orderly arranged third points solids have a higher density compared to liquids and gases fourth point solids have a high melting point and boiling point compared to liquid sign gases fifth point in solid the particles do not have a translatory motion do not have a rotational motion only they have a vibrational motion yes so you can take a screenshot of that so that is what regarding all general characteristics of solid yes next one now we'll switch on to the classification of solids why the classification of solid is required see here guys you can see here this is a pencil you can take out the pen you can take out the marker these all are un comes under solid but they all have different character in them so to differentiate these solids we should classify the solids yes solids are mainly classified into firstly two categories crystalline solids amorphous solids yes in crystalline solids again there are several categories in crystalline solids again they are classified into four categories ionic solids metallic solids covalent solids and network solids ionic solids covalent solids metallic solids yes first one we will study regarding again that whatever the molecular solids are there no molecular solids are classified into again three categories polar solids non polar solids and hydrogen bonded solids that is also called a crystals also yes molecular solids again classified into three types polar non polar hydrogen bonded yes now we'll study one by one first one crystalline solids what are crystalline solids guys look at the name crystals this is just like a crystal rubbish nature yes crystalline solids are the solids which have yes orderly arrangement long range ordered arrangement crystalline solids are the solids which have long range ordered arrangement that means they have a systematic arrangement of the constituent particles in solid there are atoms those atoms are arranged systematically in long range order yes so in crystalline solids long range order uh, arrangement is there and very systematically particles are arranged so crystalline solids what are the characteristics of crystalline solids guys so in crystalline solid you can take an example of nacl ice quartz these all are example for crystalline solids yes what are the characteristics of crystalline solids guys crystalline solids are having long range orderly arrangement therefore they have definite geometrical shape they have a particular shape you can take any uh, crystalline solid they have a particular definite geometrical shape first point next crystalline solids are having sharp melting point and boiling point sharp melting point and boiling point means that means at a particular temperature they will going to boil or they will going to melt this is because because of systematic arrangement definite geometrical shape they will uh, boil or melt at particular temperature that is called sharp melting point or boiling point that means crystalline solids are having definite geometrical shape crystalline solids are having sharp melting point and boiling point third point is crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature what is this anisotropic guys means anisotropic means if you measure any physical properties like electrical conductivity refractive index chemical conductivity etc they will going to be different along different direction 
that means if you measure in a different direction you will get a different refractive index different uh, melting uh, what is that uh, electrical conductivity etc this nature is called anisotropic nature solids are anisotropic in nature crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature what is anisotropic guys anisotropic means uh, physical properties like a refractive index as electrical conductivity chemical conductivity are different along different direction so you can see that diagram in the diagram when you come from b to a or a, a to b you are getting only blue atoms yes when you come from c to d in the in that direction you are getting both pink kind blue atoms that means when you come from a to b direction you are getting only blue atoms no pink atoms are there and when you may come from c to d you are getting pink kind blue both atoms that means in a different direction you are getting different number of atoms in a different direction different number of atoms means you are getting the physical properties like a refractive index electrical conductivity also different along different direction if you measure from a to b the electrical conductivity is different same crystal itself but different direction different value we are getting so therefore in a crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature i hope you got the point here so this is regarding crystalline solids now <coughs> sorry now amorphous solids in amorphous solids in crystalline solids what i told you they have a orderly arrangement with long range order similarly in amorphous solids the constituent particles are not orderly arranged but they are not long range order they are short range order so up to certain point they are getting orderly arrangement after that that order arrangement breaks random arrangement is there amorphous solids are the solids which are short range orderly arrangement they do not have a long range they have a short range up to some point only they are getting order arrangement yes so in crystalline solids we have studied they have a definite geometrical shape but amorphous solids do not have a definite geometrical shape yes so we will discuss regarding the characteristics of amorphous solids amorphous solids characteristics first one they do not have a definite geometrical shape yes if they do not have a definite geometrical shape then as they have a sharp melting point or boiling point no so in amorphous solids they do not have a sharp melting point and boiling point because they do not have a definite shape means when you put a heat they will not melt at a time some of the portion will melt first and remaining portion will melt next that means they do not have a sharp melting point and boiling point regarding amorphous solids i am talking about yes so in amorphous solids you can take an example of pvc polyvinyl chloride plastic and also you can take a glass also an example for amorphous solids next characteristic or uh, characteristics of amorphous solid is they they do not have a definite shape they do not have a sharp melting point and boiling point and they are isotropic in nature we have studied in crystalline solid they are anisotropic but amorphous solids are isotropic in nature what is isotropy guys yes physical properties like melting point boiling point and yes yes uh, just like a electrical conductivity chemical conductivity and refractive index are different along different direction means that is called anisotropy same along different direction means it is isotropy that means amorphous solids are isotropic in nature that means physical properties like a electrical conductivity refractive index are same along different direction this is because in amorphous solids you move you move anywhere in any direction you are getting same number of atoms in crystalline solids the number of atoms are different but in amorphous solids you can move in any direction you are getting same number of atoms therefore you are getting same refractive index same electrical conductivity same magnetic conductivity therefore amorphous solids are isotropic in nature yes after this we are going to study the uh, some difference between amorphous solids and crystalline solids yes first one crystalline solids crystalline solids have a definite geometrical shape but amorphous solids do not have a definite geometrical shape yes second point crystalline solids have a 
orderly arrangement of particles that are long range order arrangement but in amorphous solids short range order arrangement yes third point crystalline solids have a sharp melting and boiling point amorphous solids do not have a sharp melting point and boiling point fourth point yes crystalline solids are called true solids yes but amorphous solids are called pseudo solids false solid solids they are called yes and amorphous amor crystalline solids have a high heat of fusion um, crystalline solids have a high heat of fusion amorphous solids have a low heat of fusion so last difference is crystalline solids usually soluble in water but amorphous solids are not soluble in water usually they are insoluble in water so these are the difference between crystalline solids and amorphous solids so you can get in uh, notes in the screen you can take a screenshot of it regarding amorphous and crystalline solid differences okay next comes here types of crystalline solids so in crystalline solids solids are classified into again four categories first one is ionic solid molecular solid covalent solid and metallic solids these are the four types so first one ionic solids look at the name ionic so no doubt ionic solid is a crystalline solid in that what is difference here ions are the constituent particles constituent particle means the solid is made up of some particle right those are called atoms so here the atoms are ions in ionic solid constituent particles are ions and in between two ions there is a coulombic force you can call it a van der waals force in between the ion coulombic force is there and therefore ionic solids are ha having ion as a constituent particles coulombic force of attraction and they are very hard and brittle in nature ionic solid crystalline solids are having very hard and brittle in nature and they have a high melting point and boiling point in ionic solids they have a high melting point and boiling point so example is you can take a sodium chloride as an example yes ionic solids are having ion as a constituent particle here coulombic force is having or uh, in between two ions there is a coulombic force they are very high uh, hard and brittle and they are having high melting point and boiling point example is sodium chloride second one second class that is called molecular solids here molecular molecular solids look at the name molecule as a constituent particles in this case molecule as a constituent particles and here the uh, between two molecule there is a weak van der waals force of attraction which one weak van der waals force of attraction is there and again this molecular solids are classified into two categories non polar crystals and polar crystals yes in non polar crystals van der waals force of attraction is there between the two constituent particles and in polar crystal there is a dipole moment is there between two so in both the these are comes under molecular solids in molecular solids they are having molecular as a constituent particles they may again non polar or polar if non polar then van der waals force of attraction polar then dipole moment as a force of attraction they are very soft and they are very soft in nature and brittle in nature so non polar solids are soft polar solids are brittle in nature so next one they are having low melting point and boiling point so molecular solids are having low melting point and boiling point example is iodine naphthalene etc so second category which one is that second category is molecular solids in molecular solid molecules are the constituent particles and here again two types are there non polar molecular so crystals and polar molecular crystals non polar molecular crystals are having yes non polar molecular crystals are having weak van der waals force of attraction polar molecular uh, molecular solids are having yes what is that dipole moment next non polar molecular crystals are having soft in nature polar molecular crystals are having very brittle in nature so in both the case example is iodine and naphthalene third one covalent 
covalent solids here constituent particles are atoms in covalent solids constituent particles are atoms that means covalent solids are made up of atoms here in between two atoms there is a covalent bond in between two atoms there is a covalent bond next one they are very hard in nature they are having very high melting point and boiling point and example is diamond and graphite all right examples so covalent solid atoms are the constituent particles they are having very high melting point they are hard in nature example is diamond and graphite last one that is nothing but your metallic solids here again constituent particles are atoms here metallic bonding is present between two atoms and they are very hard and malleable and very variable melting point and boiling point example copper silver zinc anything you can take so metallic solids are also crystalline solids what are the characteristics they are atoms are having the constituent particles metallic solids are having atoms as a constituent particles in metallic solids metallic bond is present and very hard and malleable in nature variable melting point and boiling point example copper zinc silicon anything copper zinc silver iron like that these are all are crystalline solids in that metallic solids so this is regarding classification of crystalline solids you can take a screenshot of regarding that uh, whatever we have studied the crystalline solid classification next in the next coming video we are going to discuss regarding unit cell lattice point and number of atoms in the particular unit cell you will see uh, study in the next video thanks for watching if you have any doubts please comment below thank you